Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Romans. Now, I know you might be thinking, you're pretty sure you know all 42 civs in the game, and Romans aren't one of them. Alternately, maybe you're thinking we already have the Romans. They're called the Byzantines, followed by a long screed about why they should be called the Romans, referring to themselves as such, and Byzantines is just a revisionist label created long after the fact. Either way, I like the cut of your jib, but that's actually not what we're talking about in this video. Instead, we're going to be looking at an insanely well-produced mod overhauling Age of Empires 2, which combines AoE 2 mechanics with the AoE 1 time period, taking from the best parts of both definitive editions while adding a bunch of new units and mechanics as well as high-quality reskins. If AoE 2 is your favorite game of the franchise, but you like the antiquity period with Romans, Egyptians, Spartans, and such, then this is the mod for you. The mod is called Romae Ad Bellum, which is Latin for Rome at War. It's actually a very old mod, originally started 20-ish years ago by the creators of Zero AD, if you're familiar with that game, but the torch has really been carried recently by a community team, which has greatly expanded its scope in AoE 2 Definitive Edition over the last year or so. The mod is still in progress, but now has 16 out of 22 planned civilizations working at this point. Here you can see in the Civ selection screen, civilizations with a colored icon are functional at the moment, while others with a Rome at War stand-in icon are planned to be finished in the future. At the end, I'll show you how to download it and either play single player or multiplayer with your friends in an unranked lobby, though the main goal of this video is to introduce some of the mechanics while deep diving one of the civilizations that I think is relatively easy to pick up given their variety of options. Now, since this is a major overhaul and not just a reskin, to give some context, we'll need to talk about a few key differences from regular AoE 2. First off, gunpowder has of course been removed as this is set in antiquity. Cleverly though, they've managed to save the hand cannoneer unit by instead replacing it with the crossbowman. It has the same stats and bonus as the regular hand cannoneer and is still unlocked by chemistry, but fits the aesthetic of the time period much better. The regular archer and crossbow line now uses just archers, with all the same stats as from the base game archer line. That's just the beginning of the reskins though. Notably, the halberdier and elite skirmisher have really cool looking revisions that are again inspired by Roman units. The cavalry and militia line as well tend to use AoE 1 or scenario editor units, and of course there's also a chariot unit for Egyptians. That's on top of several unique units completely made from scratch for the various civilizations, some of which also have unique abilities. The buildings at least are functionally the same as AoE 2 for the most part, but are also reskinned. Some of those skins are made completely from scratch, though always with very professional quality. Admittedly, the repurposed buildings can be a little confusing the first game or two if you've played AoE 1 Definitive Edition, as some buildings have been repurposed from AoE 1 to a different type of building altogether. As one example, the AoE 1 Temple is now the University, and the old government building is now the Monastery, so a few little things to get used to. Visually though, between the newly added buildings and wonders, on top of a clever reuse of previous game assets, you can really get some stunning cities, and there's no question this mod could stand alone as a base builder, or be used as a foundation to create some really awesome historical scenarios. Another big difference to know is trebuchets don't exist, as that wasn't something in antiquity, and instead you have heavy onagers, which are functionally similar and created at the fort, which is the equivalent of an AoE 2 castle. One of the most innovative changes though is you have access to two castle and two imperial unique texts, but you can only choose one from each age. You can read both of the options in this example from imperial age, but then have to lock in your choice before you can research it. For example, with the Athenians, one imperial unique tech lets your archery range units fire faster and gain pierce armor, while the other gives your normally weak knight line a 75% gold discount. You essentially get to decide the direction you want to take your civilization in a way that vanilla AoE 2 doesn't offer. The fact you're able to customize your Civ mid-game makes the 16 civilizations feel like significantly more and adds a lot of replayability. Now, I won't get into all of them, but just know that there's some very unique mechanics for some civilizations. Germani, for example, have a movable resource camp for 300 wood that avoids having to replace lumber camps in the traditional sense. Villagers drop off any resource at the camp and then you can move it wherever you like. I promise all of these things are very easy to get used to quickly, and this is just to show the creativity and depth of the overhaul. With that bit of introduction out of the way though, now let's turn our attention to the main topic, a brief overview of the Roman Empire, not to be confused with the Roman Republic, which is also in the mod. In this case, we'll want to begin with their first unique unit, the Legionary. Unlike most unique units, this one is created at the barracks starting in Castle Age, or Middle Antiquity Age as it's called in the mod. 
Similar to the Wrath Chariot for Bengalis, Legionaries have a melee mode that you can toggle into a ranged mode with a corresponding drop in damage. The description says they're good against infantry, but weak against cavalry and archers, though a range mode does help quite a bit against archer units. The cost is pretty similar to the regular swordsman line, which you also have, and the stats aren't far off either, so it feels like the ranged mode is the main thing that differentiates them. They're upgraded by infantry attack and armor, though the archer attack upgrades increase their range and attack when throwing javelins. Of course, there's an elite upgrade at the barracks in Imperial Age as well, though I don't think we need to get into the exact details. In my admittedly limited experience, I see this as their core unit, as they're fairly cheap, strong, and versatile, especially with their range attack, while also being trained in just 10 seconds in Imperial Age from the barracks, so it's not tricky to get a large number, like many vanilla unique units. Their second unique unit is the Praetorian Prefect. These are created at the fort, which is the equivalent of a castle, and are a little stronger than a knight, but with less pierce armor. They cost 35 more resources overall though, so at first they may seem like a worse version of the regular knight, but have a hidden small bonus damage against other cavalry, according to my testing. It's functionally a mild counter to the regular heavy cavalry line, but that's weaker against archers, so it is a bit situational. You can definitely see the anti-cavalry aspect being useful against Numidians, Huns, Persians, or Parthians, as all of them are incentivized to make cavalry or cavalry archers, which is something infantry alone would struggle against. Moving on, their team bonus is that their scorpions have plus one attack. Of course, there's two versions of Romans in the mod, and both actually have a bit of a focus on scorpions. Anything to help deal with archers is always very welcome, given Romans are primarily an infantry civilization, of course. As for their civ bonuses, the first is they can access Capdram and Onager in age earlier, so the equivalent of what would be the Castle Age. You still have to pay for the upgrades at full price, but again we see the infantry and siege focus. Advanced siege weapons were of course a major advantage Romans had over some of their neighbors, and while there's no bombard cannon in the Roman War mod, you do have fully upgraded siege rams, siege onagers, and heavy scorpions, so tons of options. Their next bonus is scouts, skirmishers, and spearmen cost 20% less. This feels very Byzantine, and of course they were the Roman Empire, so that makes sense. The mod including scouts here instead of camels is a nice touch, as while the Roman Empire doesn't have access to camels in the mod, this actually gives you the option of a nice scout opening. The Roman Empire also has pretty decent cavalry in the early to mid game, though they are missing the paladin equivalent upgrade. Moving on, we have two bonuses all lumped together for their legionaries. Not only do they train faster than for other civilizations at the barracks, especially in the Imperial Age, but they also gain plus one pierce armor in Middle Antiquity, which is the renamed Castle Age, and then another pierce armor in Imperial. We really see how much you're pushed toward your easy to mass and versatile legionary unit at the barracks. And let's be honest, it also looks amazing, which I can attest to as being as fun to play with as it looks. The last bonus is a bit of an economy one, with 33% faster advancing to the next age. Again, that pairs really nicely with a scout rush into heavy cavalry, or even a fast castle into infantry and siege. Checking out the unique techs, as mentioned before, these are done in a bit of a different way. You have two techs for castle and two more for imperial age, but have to commit to one of them from each age first before you can research them. One drawback of the system at the moment is you actually can't see the cost until you commit, but I'm told that's a game mechanic limitation that prevents people from being able to research both. To start in Castle Age, the first gives your Scorpions 9 instead of 7 range, and also removes their minimum range. This lets them fire from one tile outside of an Onager's reach, making them a lot safer in that regard, and turning off minimum range is likewise great against cavalry, so definitely a good choice if you're making a lot of Scorpions. Your other option is to reduce the cost of forts by 25% and let them be built 50% faster. At least in the current balance, that has a great payback, saving 162 stone per fort and giving you half the Sicilian's faster castle building bonus. In this example, you can see you have to commit between going with a unit focus or a building one, depending on your playstyle. Switching to Imperial Age, the first option lets villagers and trade carts take up 25% less space. Essentially, your fully boomed 150 pop economy drops to 113, freeing up space for 37 more units, which is perfect for players like me who love to overboom. The second option lets your forts heal nearby units, which in a quick test looked to me to be about 70 HP per minute, which means they fully heal any elite legionaries nearby in under a minute. This is a very strong defensive bonus, but can even be combined with a forward fort in your enemy's face. Generally, all of the unique techs in the game seem fairly strong, as you might have noticed, and give a nice way to permanently push your civilization in one direction or another. Personally, for the Roman Empire, I like the cheaper forts and pop space, but I could completely see someone picking the opposite techs as well, or go for both fort techs for some synergy. 
It's obvious a good deal of love and thought has gone into finding historical connections and giving the player tough choices. For a general Roman game plan, I've liked opening with discounted scouts, going up conservatively with an extra villager, but then end up ahead because of the faster advancing. You can then either follow that up with cavalrymen or switch to bowmen if your opponent counters with a lot of spears. At some point in the Third Age though, I personally like to switch to Legionaries and Siege, as the fact that Legionaries don't require any prerequisite upgrades makes them feel more viable than the usual Swordsman line. Plus, they have significantly more armor and HP than the Castle Age Longswords that you're probably used to. The extra Pierce Armor and ranged attack also makes them less vulnerable to archers than you're probably used to the Militia line being. You also of course have discounted counter units with fantastic Roman theme reskins that I personally try to include whenever possible. Between great infantry, decent cavalry, great siege, and even pretty decent archers, you can see the Roman Empire is just a really solid and flexible sieve that's easy to pick up. Though that said, all the sieves actually feel a bit super powered compared to those in the vanilla game. Spartans, for example, have a unique tech that removes bonus damage against their infantry, and another giving their infantry 50% more bonus damage. Even an existing civilization like Huns from the regular game has some notable improvements and powerful unique techs. Personally, I think making the civs a bit overpowered actually just makes the mod more fun. So I realized this video was something a little unusual, but hopefully it was interesting whether you plan on downloading the mod or not. I'm a bit of a Roman Empire nerd, and this mod has really blown me away with its graphics, attention to detail, and clever tweaks to AW2 mechanics, bringing things more in line with that time period. Assuming you like the sound of it, I've attached a link to a quick tutorial on how you can get the mod yourself and try it out in either single player or multiplayer with your friends. Depending on your internet connection and familiarity with finding mod folders, I'd say it would take anywhere between 5 to 20 minutes to get running the first time, and the link to that tutorial should be the first line of the description below. That'll do it for this one though. Big thanks to Seb, Woodruff, John, Jockster, Justin, Kyle, James, Jean-Paul, Samantha, and everyone else on Patreon for their awesome support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.